Hello everyone, we are back, and as you can see, this is three of us on a bench here in Montana. It's a little bit different format than uh, our normal LMS cast episodes with the side-by-side -side video, because I'm usually in California, and Chris here is here on this beautiful farm in Montana. But today we're going to switch it up, because we're at an off-site, and we thought we would have a little bit uh, of fun, and bring in our lead developer here, Mark Nelson who is going to help us answer a few questions about WordPress LMS themes. So Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and then we'll, we'll just extract all of Mark's expertise for the audience. <laughs> so when you build a WordPress powered learning management system, one of the first things you start Googling is WordPress LMS theme, WordPress LMS plugin, and we decided with our learning management system plugin, Lifter LMS, to go the plugin route. And maybe we could start there. Why are we using a plugin instead of a theme? Well, the main reason that we went with the plugin, because as you've seen, there's a handful of LMSs out there that are themes and some that are plugins. Um, WordPress as a foundation is really set, has kind of a foundational layer that is, you have plugins and you have themes, and there really is no difference as far as WordPress is concerned, except for just to keep things organized. Plugins usually provide functionality. Themes provide design. And so since the LMS plugin is purely functionality driven, it, it's a plugin. And so there's kind of a line that we try to fit. So the big the big idea here is, you know, I've been messing around in WordPress for, for years and some themes come with functionality. Like mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier before in our pre-chat was you know, things like slideshows, and in your mind, a clean theme is just going to be design, and then you go and grab plugins for when the functionality is needed. Absolutely, and it's not that a theme can't have any functionality to it, but the functionality really needs to be driven towards the design and the layout of the site. So I think a good example would be something like the Canvas theme by Woo Themes that provides all types of functionality as far as designing and styling the site and laying it out as far without, as content. Without coding. Without mm -hmm. without coding and it also doesn't cross the line as far as providing too much in the way that plugins can provide. So when you talk about like things like catching and and SEO and different things like that, you want you want to be able to use plugins to provide that functionality and it keeps things clean, it keeps a lot of conflicts from happening when you do that. It gives you a lot more functionality because what you really want to do is you ideally you want to have a site with all this functionality built into it that you can quickly just grab a new theme add a new theme to it and still maintain the functionality and just change the layout and design that's really cool so with the lifter lms plugin what we say is that it works with any well-coded wordpress theme and we kind of want to unpack that a little bit and talk about what that means and how to select a theme but as a starting point, what we're saying here is it'll work with any good theme. Pick a good theme that works for you in terms of design and layout and its re responsive behavior on a mobile device or iPad or whatever. That's really what the theme is for. But in, in terms of picking a well-coded theme, there's a couple things you want to avoid. Number one is one of the other WordPress learning management system themes uh, if you install the Lifter LMS plugin, it, it can create conflicts because they're both trying to do the same thing or similar things. Can you talk about that a little bit, Mark? Yeah, so if you look at some of the, the LMS plugin themes, what they've done is they've, they either have themes built into them that, that provide some, or plugins built into them that provide some functionality, or they've gone to the point of just including a bunch of different functionality into the theme. And when our plugin gets installed and we have courses and lessons and sections and quizzes and your theme also has courses, lessons, sections and quizzes, there's obviously a conflict there. Um, besides that, you have the issue of just having a constant nightmare of trying to organize that. So I think that's a big point. Another thing when we say well-coded WordPress theme, recently uh, we were experimenting with a theme that was popular about three or four years ago called Thesis. Mm -hmm. And we ran into some trouble with the Lifter LMS plugin on that theme. It still worked, but maybe you could tell us why it didn't work out with the Thesis theme, which I want to caution you about if you're selecting a theme to not pick that one for Lifter LMS. But what right. happened? 
And it's not that necessarily thesis is written badly at all in any way, but what thesis has done is they've, I guess you would say, hijacked the templating system of WordPress to provide their own templating functionality, which is fantastic for case scenarios. But what it does for plugins like ours, plugins like WooCommerce, and any, any other plugins that build templating features in order to provide things like products or courses, it, it, doesn't, it, it just completely hijacks it so it won't work at all out the gate. It requires an extension to be built in order to replicate those templates again in the Themex theme. Interesting. Well, let's, let's wrap it up and leave people with some specific uh, ideas of where to go to find a good WordPress theme. Uh, that would work with the Lifter LMS plugin. Uh, all of us have worked with a lot of different WordPress themes, and so far in our experimentation with Lifter LMS, uh, some of the major players like Woo Themes, and we mentioned the Canvas theme, but Woo has a lot of themes. Uh, another one is the Studio Press. Those themes, which are built, are our themes or child themes built on top of the Genesis framework. We've done some testing there, and those look very beautiful. Uh, but you can also go out to uh, Theme Forest or other themes and, and try things out and just, just see how it goes. But look for themes that, don't, that aren't trying to do too much stuff that a plugin should do. You know, look for good design, but not necessarily lots of extra functionality coming from the theme itself. That's really what plugins are for. And can, can you give an example of what that looks like, Chris? Like, what's a theme that's doing a lot of plugin things? Um, that you think would conflict with what we've built, or something that people should be cautious of? Well, I would say one thing we've mentioned is sometimes sliders that are built into themes can be starting to hijack the WordPress core. Uh, we call it custom post types. If there's a lot of like really fancy stuff the theme is trying to do in terms of uh, custom post types, it may be an indicator that, oh, I may, might not want to go to that one. Uh, so that, that's something to be cautious of. Another thing is when you install WordPress, as you know, it comes with the 2012, 2013, 2014 theme. Those are great themes if you're looking for a free theme and just want to learn the plugin and all the functionality it has. Uh, I actually recommend 2012. It's the most simple looking uh, theme that comes with the WordPress install that's 100% going to work in every way. So that's a, that's a good place to start and it's also free. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Genesis framework. I think they've just they've done an amazing uh, way of um, building the child themes. So you have this huge selection of all these great themes with all this awesome functionality, and the framework itself is just really well built and it's built around the WordPress core so that it doesn't hijack anything there. Um, yeah, Woo Themes is another great one. I think you just want to be cautious of. Themes that just look too good have too much functionality. A lot of theme designers today really, to sell the theme, add a lot of slideshows and um, special widgets and a lot of extra functionality in order to really make the theme look good, but in the end it ends up causing you more trouble. Ideally what you want is something that looks good and is easy to style and, and design yourself without a developer. Um, and if you want slideshows, if you want extra widgets, if you want social sharing, that can all be you can get free plugins or you can purchase plugins to get that functionality and that way you're not tied to a theme because what you don't want to happen is two or three down two or three years down the road end up wanting to change the design of your site which happens every three years or so anyway and now you're locked into this theme because all the functionality that you have built into your system comes from your theme and you're either forced into buying another theme from the same provider or having to completely redo the system from scratch mm -hmm. So if you have a question of like, will this theme work, go ahead and send an email to chris at lifterlms.com. And I also want to say that when you buy or purchase Lifter LMS, you also get access to our support forum. So we're going to have discussions there where you can really help find the best theme uh, for your business or your education application. So it's just one of the perks of, of joining the Lifter LMS community so that you have that community and people have tried different things and you can really access uh, the ideas and, and what has happened for other people trying to do the same thing you are. But feel free to email me directly at chris at lifterlms.com. Yeah, and if you have been watching the video and you feel like me sitting between these two geniuses with uh, some <laughs> extra questions, just feel free to email any of us here at LifterLMS. It's chris at LifterLMS, josh at LifterLMS. Um, 
Mark at Lifter LMS, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Other than that, we will see you next episode.